The Liquor Control Board of Ontario traces its roots back to the temperance and prohibition era. In an attempt to satisfy public concerns, the government of the day established the LCBO. The board was designed to deliver money to the Treasury and regulate sales of alcohol to public and licensed establishments. Fast forward to today, and the LCBO pours in billions of dollars in profits to the government coffers. It maintains over 600 stores as well as supplying nearly 17,000 licensed establishments across the province. While the LCBO has modernized its operations to keep up with the times, there are critics of the government control monopoly that believe that the LCBO no longer serves a purpose. Joining me is James Rylett, Vice President of Ontario for Restaurant Canada to discuss what's wrong with the LCBO and what we should be doing about it. James, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So in your opinion, what's the problem with the LCBO's current system as it affects both your constituents in the restaurant and uh, licensed establishments, as well as the public? Well, the biggest problem we have is the unique uh, Ontario uh, system where you have a separate beer system and a separate LCB, uh, liquor system. Um, that's rarely seen anywhere. Um, what happens is because the LCBO has a secret deal to, uh, well, not so secret now, to only sell beer in, in the beer store, our members can't buy at the LCBO. Now, the LCBO sells to our members at, at uh, list price, and the beer store actually sells, uh, believe it or not, to our members at 30 to 50% more than you would pay yourself. So I, I was reading somewhere that a case of beer on average is $30 at the, L, at the beer store, and you have to pay close to $45 for yeah, a case? Yeah, the, that's the worst case scenario is with Labatt Ballou. It's $30 for an individual and 45 for members. Uh, for most others, it, it ranges around 30, around $10 more, about 30%, but uh, it's fairly significant when you're running a business. So how do they justify that the average consumer can go into a beer store, pick up a case, bring it home, and then they go to their local establishment to watch a hockey game or a baseball game, and they're paying 50% markup just for getting the product to your stores or to your restaurants. They've, I've never heard a good ju justification of it. Uh, most of the beer companies simply say we don't discuss cost pricing. Um, so they've, they've never even answered to us as to why that is. Um, it, it goes against every, every business uh, policy that anyone knows. And... Uh, well, I can't understand it. So how does that impact on your members, on the restaurateurs, the licensed establishments, when they're paying that type of uh, markup? Well, it mostly affects independents that, uh, they, you know, they don't have the ability to, to find other uh, ways to make up for that lost revenue. Um, they're cutting back hours. They're, they're mm -hmm. doing other things uh, to try and uh, economize. Um, and it's it's significant money, especially for a small business. Even mm -hmm. if you even on this low scale, if you're going through, well, for example, if you go through 100 cases of beer a, a week, uh, it would cost you about a thousand dollars out of your profit margin every week. So that that's the additional cost. In other industries, uh, in the food industry, for example, you can get a discount on bulk purchases. So if you're buying thousands of dollars worth of a product, usually the a uh, company will give you a break on it uh, so you can then mark it up, you know, and that's yep. your, your margin on that. How does that work in alcohol sales? Are you, do you have that same ability to buy in bulk? No, it doesn't matter how much you buy, you, all, you pay the same price. Uh, most provinces give us a, a, volume, or a discount for a licensee discount, it's called. Um, we don't get that in, uh, in li liquor sales um, uh, in Ontario. In LCBO, we pay the same price as, as uh, list price, um, but at, in beer store, we pay more than list. So there's really no inherent advantage in, in anything that the government is offering to, to consumers through purchasing alcohol in a licensed establishment in Ontario. No, there's not. There's, there's no encouragement of small business. There's no encouragement to, to help business uh, flourish uh, in Ontario. So what are the Restaurants Canada doing to try and persuade the government to take a different approach on this? Well, we've met with Ed Clark. We've asked him uh, to two things. We've asked him to get rid of the deal that uh, that 
doesn't allow the, us to buy product in, in LCBOs. Um, we think that's the quickest thing that, that, that we can do to ensure that our price uh, comes under control. Um, secondly, we've asked him to allow, uh, allow us to buy from uh, craft beer, uh, allow craft beers to mm -hmm. sell their, their beer together. So one of the biggest problems, our, our members love craft beer. They love to supply it. One of the biggest problems is if you have 12 different uh, craft beers, you have to have 12 different deliveries. So uh, if there was a change so that we could have one delivery, that would, that would help a, a lot. Now, I was uh, reading that a licensed establishment has to go through nine different steps in order to place an order and get it delivered. And even the delivery, sometimes they have to go pick it up from the central warehouse from the LCBO. Yeah, it depends on the product. If you're ordering a product that they don't usually stock, it, it is very complicated. It's a complex. Um, it's also complex for new product. People ha uh, that create a new product or want to import a new product because you have to find a um, somebody to care, an agent. Uh, so they make it complex um, to both buy and to, uh, and to create new product. So a lot of restaurants, one of the things that distinguishes them is their wine list. And, uh, you know, it's a competitive advantage having different wines that you can't get at the LCBO or you can't uh, get on your own. How difficult it is for a restaurant to have that type of uh, selection available for consumers? It depends. If, if it's an established agent, uh, it's fairly straightforward. But if it's a wine that's not usually carried or that the LCBO doesn't have an experience with, it, it can be very complicated. They have to test them, etc. cetera. Um, and one, one uh, operator that I've talked to like to go to wine auctions where they buy special brands, special years, uh, just to have the, the best available. And it, it, uh, it's very hard for them to, get, to do that. Mm -hmm. In, in terms of uh, the overall uh, system, you know, some people compare it to the old Stalinist uh, regime where you're, you're only allowed to bought, purchase the items that the government approves. And, and that's why the large companies, uh, you know, the Labatt's, the Molson's, et cetera, have such a dominant position is because they've been inherent in, in uh, Ontario for all these years? Um, on, on the restaurant side, it's, 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 a, it's a combination. Like, well, first of all, the, the top brands also do dominate in the restaurant industry and in the bar industry, mainly because of advertisement. And our members aren't usually there to, to, to sell a certain kind of beer. They, they just sell whatever the customer asks for. We are seeing a lot more now where uh, um, better restaurants are pairing uh, different beers, especially mm -hmm. with different meals. So, so people are getting uh, uh, introduced to a lot of beers they normally wouldn't taste, um, and wines and, and ciders as, as getting popular. So we always look at ourselves as the first step to introducing new product to, to people because you might not buy a case of it in the beer store, but you might try a, try a, a bottle of it in, the, in your local uh, bar if it's suggested by the bartender. In 2005, the Dalton McGinty government established a, a task force to look at uh, alcohol sales in the province. And one of the recommendations that they submitted to then treasurer Greg Sabera was to privatize the LCBO. And uh, the McGinty government uh, didn't uh, feel that that was something, and then they shelved the report. What are your thoughts on privatized? Uh, beer and alcohol sales? Um, mostly that, I think that would affect mostly the, uh, on the retail side, how uh, the effect that it would have on us if uh, the distribution was privatized. I think there's a lot of distribution chains. Uh, we, we have lots of large companies that, that supplied our restaurants. And, and as I said earlier, the fewer times you have to have uh, somebody to, to uh, receive a delivery, the better. So if, if those could be merged, that would be great. But I, I think on the distribution side, it would especially help our members. So if, if uh, you, you've been meeting with Ed Clark and he's been trying to uh, maximize uh, provincial assets and the LCBO is one of the ones that he's looking at and he's to some degree talk also about the beer store. 
What recommendations have you made to uh, Clark uh, Commission? Well, we made three three recommendations as I, as I mentioned earlier. One was to uh, have our, our members buy product all sizes of beer at the LCBO. That, that would both lower our price and it would uh, provide better convenience. We've asked him to co for co-distribution with craft beers. We think that would help them and it would also mm -hmm. help us. We've also asked him for something called off sales, which a lot of other provinces have, which you can buy, uh, especially craft products, at a beer, at a, at a bar. Um, we think that, that would be a great addition. And you know, it's, it's something that our members are, are already have staff that are trained. Our members have security. They have all the, the reason, the, uh, ability to sell alcohol or anyway, so it's just the next logical step. Well, it sounds like with the patio season upon us, there, there are a lot of options and hopefully we'll see some of those coming in the spring budget that the minister is going to be delivering shortly. I'm joined by James Rylett from Restaurants Canada. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Marcel. We'll be back with The Point. <music>